I want to recognize all the labor unions here today, including steel workers, auto workers, sheet metal workers, AFL-CIO, IBEW, communications workers, boilermakers, machinists. I'm proud, as Rock said, to be labeled the most pro-union president in American history. You heard me say it before. Wall Street's important. A lot of good folks there, but they didn't build America. The middle class built America, and unions built the middle class. Folks, leaders from key American industries are here as well, including steel, aluminum, solar, semiconductors, automakers. And members of my cabinet are here as well. Janet Yellen, the front row is murderer's row here. <laughs> Treasury Department, Julie Sue, our trade our, of, of labor, Catherine Tai, our nation's trade representative, and outstanding members of Congress as well. From Michigan, Debbie Stabenow is here. Debbie, welcome. And, uh, Hall and Haley Stevens, uh, um, is here. No, I guess she, there you are. You, you did make, they told me you might not be able to make it. I'm sorry. All right. And Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, again, you smile, Debbie, it's okay. <laughs> Lisa Slotkin, well, you should be. You, you're, you're, you're responsible for a lot of this. Thank you for joining us as uh, I announce a series of actions to make sure American workers and American business and corporations can compete and win in the industries of the future, because that's what this is about. The fact is, American workers are, uh, can outwork and outcompete anyone, as long as the competition is fair. But for too long, it hasn't been fair. For years, the Chinese government has poured state money into Chinese companies across a whole range of industries, steel and aluminum, semiconductors, electric vehicles, solar panels, the industries of the future, and even critical health equipment like gloves and masks, China heavily subsidized all these products, pushing Chinese companies to produce far more than the rest of the world can absorb, and then dumping the excess products onto the market at unfairly low prices, driving other manufacturers around the world out of business. You know, we, I won't go into it, but we were talking today about how many aluminum plants there used to be and how many there are now. The price is unfairly low because Chinese companies don't need to worry about a profit because the Chinese government subsidized them and subsidized them heavily. And Chinese relies on other anti-competitive tactics as well, like forcing American companies to transfer their technology in order to do business in China. I spent a lot of time with Xi Jinping. Early on, I told him, he said, why am I being unfair with China? I'm unfair. I said, look, we'll play by the same rules if you want. If you want to do business in China, you've got to have a 51 percent Chinese owner. You've got to provide access to all your intellectual property, et cetera. You want to do that in America? With silence. Sometimes they just outright steal through cyber espionage and other means. And it's been a well-documented and, and internationally recognized. And when you make tactics like these, uh, they are, they're, they're, you're not competing. It's not competition. It's cheating. And we've seen damage here in America. To name one example, back in 2000, when cheap steel from China began to flood the market, U.S. steel towns across Pennsylvania and Ohio were hit hard, and any of you from those areas know well. More than 1,800 iron workers and steel workers in Pennsylvania and Ohio lost their jobs. I'm not going to let that happen again. That's why today I'm announcing new tariffs in key sectors of the economy that are going to ensure that our workers are not held back by unfair trade practices. They include the thing I'm announcing today. 25 percent tariff on Chinese steel and aluminum products, and we'll counter China's overcapacity in these industries. And we're making major investments in clean American steel and aluminum. Clean American steel and aluminum. It's a big deal. Clean because of the way we manufacture it here. It emits half as much carbon as steel made in China. Last month, my administration announced the largest investment in clean manufacturing in all of history up to $1.5 billion in six clean steel projects across America, creating and supporting thousands, thousands of union jobs. Next, a 100 percent tariff on electric vehicles made in China. People say, wow. Because we're not going to let China flood our market, making it impossible for American auto, auto, auto manufacturers to compete fairly. We're also implementing a 25 percent tariff on electric vehicle batteries from China and a 25 percent tariff on critical minerals that make those batteries. Folks, look, I'm determined that the future of electric vehicles will be made in America by union workers, period. And we'll do it by following international trade laws to do it. 
American companies are investing tens of billions of dollars in electric vehicles and batteries. And thanks to my bipartisan infrastructure law, we're building a network of 500,000 charging stations all across America, creating thousands, thousands of IBW jobs across America. Electric charging stations. And the reason to do this is simple. Electric charging stations have to be as easy to find as a gas station. And that's what this will be. You're not going to have to worry about it. You're taking off, and you're not going to be able to make it all across the country and want without having to figure something else out. Our partners around the world are making similar investments. And they also want supply chain for electric vehicles that <clears throat> isn't dominated by unfair trade practices from China. America can continue to buy Americans, I want to make this clear, notwithstanding what the other guy's saying, can buy any kind of car they want, whether it's gas, electric, or hybrid. But we're never going to allow China to unfairly control the market for these cars, period. Next. We're going to raise tariffs on Chinese solar panels from 25 to 50 percent. Here again, because the Chinese government is subsidizing excess capacity, they're flooding the market. They're driving manufacturing companies out of business in Europe. But we won't let that happen here in America. We're putting a 50 percent tariff on semiconductors made in China. These are those tiny computer — all of you know this, but for the public — those little tiny computer chips, smaller than the fingertip, that power everyday lives, everything from smartphones to automobiles to dishwashers, satellites. Look, America invented these chips, but over time, we stopped making them. We invested other overseas. Now, thanks to my Chips and Science Act, one of the most significant investments ever in science and technology, we're bringing this vital industry back home where it started, in the United States of America. And finally, <clears throat> we're putting tariffs on health equipment like masks and gloves that nurses and doctors wear every single day. If the pandemic caught us any, taught, taught us anything, we need to have a secure plot, supply of essential supplies here at home. Folks, these key sectors my administration is combining investments in America with tariffs that are strategic and targeted. It's a smart approach. Compare that to the prior, what the prior administration did. The, my predecessor promised to increase American exports and boost manufacturing, but he didn't either. He failed. He signed a trade deal with China. They were supposed to buy $200 billion more in American goods. Instead, China imports from America barely budged. And now Trump and the MAGA Republicans want across-the-board tariffs on all imports from all countries if reelected. Well, that would drive up costs for families on an average of $1,500 per year each year. It simply doesn't get it. For years, I've heard many Republicans, even Democratic friends, say China's not on the rise. Which I assume China is on the rise. America's falling behind. I've always believed they got it wrong. America's rising. We have the best economy in the world. And since I've come to office, the GDP is up. Our trade deficit with China is down to the lowest level in over a decade. And we're standing up against Chinese government unfair economic practices now. At the same time, <laughs> we're standing up for peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits. I revitalized our partnerships with the Pacific allies and in India, Australia, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, Pacific Island nations. I've made sure the most advanced American technologies we develop or invent can be used by the Chi — can't be used by the Chinese government to undermine our national security. Frankly, before it rains, frankly, uh, for all this tough talk on China, it never occurred to my predecessor to do any of that. Bottom line, I want fair competition with China, not conflict. And we're in a stronger position to win that economic competition in the 21st century against China than anyone else because we're investing in America again, in American workers. Let me close. Let me close with this. I come from Scranton, a town like a lot of working-class, middle-class neighborhoods all across America, like Racine, Wisconsin, which I visited last week. Once a manufacturing boom town until trickle-down economics came along, and the middle class in Racine got hollowed out. Six years ago, my predecessor showed up carrying a golden shovel, promising, thanks to his new $10 billion manufacturing complex, would be built in Racine. He said it would be the eighth wonder of the world, big promises that never came true. He used that gold and shovel to dig a hole, and then he fell into it. Well, it's not on my back. That's part of my — well, I'm delivering for Racine. Delivering. Thanks to the investment of my administration, Microsoft is investing billions to build a new data center in Racine, creating thousands of good-paying jobs. 
because the view from Scranton and towns like it are a lot different than from Mar-a-Lago. It's a view where that money doesn't determine your worth. Everyone is entitled to be treated with dignity and respect, and everyone deserves a fair shot. We leave nobody behind. That's the America we're building together. That's why I've never been more optimistic about our future. And I'm really going fast because of the rain. We are, and that's why we have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing, there's nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. God bless you all and better get out of the rain. Thank you very, very much.